the life of Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight, a prominent figure among Motown's female soul artists during the late 1960s and early 1970s, played a pivotal role in the success of Gladys Knight and the Pips, a musical ensemble consisting of her family members from Atlanta. Yet, in stark contrast to her flourishing career, Gladys Knight endured the pain of multiple failed marriages. Today, we invite you to delve into the life of Gladys Knight and discover the remarkable journey of this talented artist. Gladys Maria Knight, often referred to as the Empress of Soul, was born on May 28, 1944. She is a renowned American singer, song reader, actress, and businesswoman who has left an indelible mark on the world of music and entertainment. With an illustrious career spanning several decades, Gladys Knight has achieved numerous accolades and distinctions. One of her most iconic achievements came as the lead singer of the family group Gladys Knight and of the Pips, which consisted of her brother, Merrill Bubba Knight, and cousins William Guest and Edward Patton. Together, they created a musical legacy that resonates to this day. Despite her success in her career, Gladys Knight's journey through matrimony was marked by both joy and adversity. She entered into four marriages during her lifetime and became a mother to three children. At a tender age of 16, she found herself pregnant and decided to marry her classmate and Atlanta musician James Jimmy Newman in 1960. Tragically, she experienced a miscarriage during this period. Despite this early setback, the couple went on to have two children together. However, their union faced significant challenges as Newman grappled with drug addiction, which ultimately led to his abandonment of the family when Gladys Knight was just 20 years old. Remarkably, they remained married for over 12 years until 1973, battling through tumultuous times. During their marriage, they welcomed a son named James Jimmy Gaston Newman III, born on August 13, 1962. Amid the difficulties they encountered, Gladys Knight made the courageous decision to step away from her music career temporarily. She retired from performing on the road to focus on raising their child, even as the Pips, her family's musical group, continued to tour independently. In November 1963, Gladys Knight and James Newman celebrated the birth of their only daughter, Kenya Maria Newman. The responsibilities of motherhood and the desire to provide for her growing family eventually led Gladys Knight back to her passion for recording and performing with the Pips. In the early 1960s, Gladys, James, and the Pips relocated to Detroit, where they embarked on a new chapter in their lives. They settled in the prestigious Sherwood Forest neighborhood on Sherborne Road, located on Detroit's west side. Gladys Knight also resided on LaSalle Avenue for a period, ensuring her children received a quality education by sending them to Gesu Catholic grade school. The challenges in their marriage persisted, and after enduring a separation that spanned seven years, Gladys Knight made the difficult decision to divorce James Newman in 1973. Tragically, he passed away a few years following their divorce, marking the end of a tumultuous chapter in her personal life. In 1974, after the challenges of her previous marriage, Gladys Knight found love again and married Barry Hankerson in Detroit. Barry Hankerson was the creator of Black Ground Records, a label that would later sign his niece, the talented R&B singer Aaliyah, to a record deal. Together, Gladys and Barry welcomed a son, Shanga Ali Hankerson, into the world on August 1, 1976. However, their marital journey faced its own set of difficulties, and around 1977, the couple decided to relocate to Atlanta, while the Pips, the musical group that Gladys was part of, remained in Detroit. Unfortunately, Gladys Knight's marriage to Barry Hankerson encountered serious challenges and ultimately came to an end in 1979. The separation led to a prolonged and emotionally taxing custody battle over their son, adding another layer of complexity to her personal life. Tragedy struck again in 1979 when Gladys Knight's son, Shanga Ali Hankerson, was kidnapped. Distraught by the disappearance of her child, she spared no effort or expense in her quest to find him, spending over a million dollars in her determined search. 
Amid the ups and downs of her personal life, Gladys Knight found herself in another marriage in 1995, this time with motivational speaker Les Brown. However, the challenges that life presented continued to impact her relationships, and she and Les Brown eventually separated and divorced in 1997. Gladys Knight's journey also included a battle with gambling addiction that spanned more than a decade. In the late 1980s, she faced a significant financial setback, losing $60,000 in a single night at the Baccarat table. Faced with the reality of her addiction, she made a courageous decision to seek help and joined Gamblers Anonymous, a step that eventually helped her break free from the grip of addiction. Throughout her life, Gladys Knight underwent a spiritual evolution. She had previously identified as a Baptist, but later converted to Catholicism. In 1997, her spiritual path took another turn as she was baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, LDS, commonly known as the Mormon Faith. This decision followed her son and daughter's departure from Catholicism to join the LDS Church. Notably, Gladys Knight's involvement in the LDS Church led to some light-hearted interactions with the LDS President Gordon B. Hinckley. She humorously suggested that the LDS congregation needed to infuse some pep into their music. To her surprise, President Hinckley agreed, leading to the formation of the Grammy Award-winning Saints Unified Voices Gospel Music Choir. Additionally, Gladys Knight took on a leadership role and led the B1 Choir at the B1 40th Anniversary Celebration of the Revelation on the Priesthood. During a significant phase of her career, Gladys Knight's son, Jimmy Newman, played a pivotal role in managing her career through his company, Newman Management, Inc. However, tragedy struck when Jimmy Newman passed away from heart failure on July 10, 1999, at the young age of 36. His untimely death left a profound impact on the family. Jimmy Newman was survived by his wife, Micheline, and their children, including daughters Nastasia and Gabrielle and sons Rishon, Stefan, and Sterling. This loss was a deeply emotional and challenging period for Gladys Knight and her family. In 2001, Gladys Knight entered a new chapter in her personal life when she married William McDowell. The couple's union brought together their families, resulting in a large and extended family. Gladys and William share a combined total of 17 grandchildren and 10 great-grandchildren, creating a close-knit and vibrant family network. The couple made their home in Fairview, North Carolina, where they established a connection to the community by owning a significant property, the former Reynolds High School in Asheville. This property serves as a community center, emphasizing their commitment to their local community. Beyond her personal life, Gladys Knight continued to be an active advocate for important causes. In 2017, she lent her support to raising funds for the Children's Learning Centers of Fairfield County, the fundraising event held at the Palace Theater and co-hosted by Carol Ann Riddell and Alan Calter, successfully raised $400,000 to benefit this crucial organization. Gladys Knight's journey is one marked by resilience, family, and her enduring commitment to making a positive impact on the world. Both through her music and her philanthropic efforts, her ability to navigate the highs and lows of life with grace and purpose is a testament to her enduring spirit. Now, we'll explore Gladys Knight's accomplished career. Throughout the 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s, Gladys Knight and the Pips recorded a string of hits that captivated audiences worldwide. Their soulful harmonies and Knight's powerful vocals made them a household name. Notably, they recorded two Billboard Hot 100 number one singles, Midnight Train to Georgia and That's What Friends Are For. The latter was a collaboration with music legends Dionne Warwick, Sir Elton John, and Stevie Wonder. In addition to their chart topping singles, the group achieved an impressive 11 number one R&B singles and released six number one R&B albums. Their remarkable success is a testament to their enduring talent and musical excellence. Gladys Knight's contributions to the music industry have earned her seven Grammy Awards, four as a solo artist and three with the Pips. 
her exceptional artistry and vocal prowess have solidified her place among the most celebrated artists in history. Furthermore, two of her signature songs, I Heard It Through the Grapevine and Midnight Train to Georgia, have been inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame for their historical and artistic significance. Beyond her musical achievements, Gladys Knight's impact extends to other realms of entertainment. She recorded the theme song for the 1989 James Bond film License to Kill, showcasing her versatility as an artist. Rolling Stone magazine recognized her as one of the 100 greatest singers of all time, a testament to her enduring influence on the music industry. In recognition of her outstanding contributions to the arts, Gladys Knight has received prestigious honors, including the National Medal of Arts and the Kennedy Center Honors. Additionally, she is an esteemed inductee into both the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the Vocal Group Hall of Fame, alongside her fellow Pips. Are you curious about Gladys Knight's early days? Gladys Maria Knight was born in Atlanta to her parents, Merrill Woodlow Knight Sr., who worked as a postal worker, and Sarah Elizabeth, Knee Woods. She grew up alongside her siblings, including a sister named Brenda and a brother named Merald Bubba Knight Jr. Unfortunately, they also faced the loss of another brother, David Billy Knight. Gladys Knight's musical journey began at a young age. During the late 1940s and early 1950s, she discovered her love for singing while participating in her church choir, where her remarkable talent first began to shine. Her incredible vocal abilities soon caught the attention of a wider audience when she achieved a significant milestone at the tender age of eight. On July 1, 1952, she triumphed on Ted Max, the original Amateur Hour TV show contest, a remarkable achievement that foreshadowed her future as a music legend. Notably, the formation of the iconic group Gladys Knight Amp the Pips was rooted in a serendipitous event during Bubba's 10th birthday party. The group's inception was an indirect result of a record player malfunction, which prompted Gladys, her brother Bubba, sister Brenda, and their cousins Eleanor and William Guest to perform together. Following this impromptu performance, they decided to form a formal group, a decision encouraged by Gladys's mother. Elizabeth Knight. The group settled on the name The Pips, drawing inspiration from the nickname of their cousin James Pip Woods. As they honed their musical talents, they started participating in talent shows in their hometown of Atlanta, consistently winning these contests. Their success garnered the attention of music industry professionals, eventually leading to a record contract with Brunswick Records in 1957. At Brunswick, the group released two recordings although they did not achieve chart success at that time. Nevertheless, they began to gain recognition by opening for renowned R&B acts such as Jackie Wilson and Sam Cooke. Despite initial setbacks, the group's journey continued. In 1959, Brunswick Records ended their contract, and during this period, both Brenda Knight and Eleanor Guest decided to step away from the pips to focus on starting families. To fill the void... They welcomed new members into the fold, including another cousin, Edward Patton, and a friend named Langston George. This evolution marked the early stages of the group's storied career, which would go on to shape the landscape of soul music. In 1961, Gladys Knight and the Pips embarked on a pivotal phase of their musical journey. They recorded the song Every Beat of My Heart, which was penned by Johnny Otis. At this time, the group did not have a record label to promote their music. Fortunately, a local Atlanta label named Huntom Records stepped in to champion their cause and managed to secure a distribution deal with VJ Records for the song's release. The group made a significant move to New York, where they seized an opportunity to audition for Bobby Robinson's Fury Records. However, they soon discovered that their hit song, Every Beat of My Heart, was already gaining popularity, yet they were not reaping the financial benefits they deserved. In response, Robinson decided to have the Pips re-record the song and release it under the Fury Records label. This strategic move led to both versions of the song, making their mark on the Billboard charts. 
The Huntum VJ version of Every Beat of My Heart achieved a remarkable feat, climbing to number six on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Concurrent with this success, the group underwent a name change, adopting the moniker Gladys Knight and the Pips. As their career continued to flourish, they released the single Letter Full of Tears later in 1961, which became another top 40 hit in early 1962. Building on this momentum, the group released a series of singles under the Fury Records label. However, in 1962, Langston George, a member of the group, made his departure. During the same year, Gladys Knight decided to take a break from the group to start a family with her husband, musician Jimmy Newman. Her absence, though notable, was temporary, and she returned to the fold in 1964. This pivotal reunion led to the group signing with Larry Maxwell's Max label, marking a new chapter in their musical journey. Under the Max label, they collaborated with producer Van McCoy and released several noteworthy hits. Those songs, released during their Max label era, showcased their evolving sound and marked yet another chapter in the legendary career of Gladys Knight and the Pips. Gladys Knight and the Pips embarked on a significant phase in their career when they joined the Motown Records roster in 1966, even though they didn't have an assured hit at the time. Despite being initially perceived as a second-string act by the label, they went on to achieve remarkable success with a string of major hit singles. During their early Motown career, Gladys Knight and the Pips had the honor of touring as the opening act for the legendary Diana Ross and the Supremes. In her memoirs, Gladys Knight revealed that Diana Ross removed them from the tour due to the overwhelming reception Knight's soulful performance received, which somewhat overshadowed Ross's act. Barry Gordy, the head of Motown Records, later informed Knight that her act was giving his star act a tough competition. In 1973, they made a pivotal move by leaving Motown Records for a more promising deal with Buddha Records. This transition marked a turning point in their career, leading to even greater mainstream success. The year 1973 witnessed chart-topping hits, including the Grammy-winning Midnight Train to Georgia, which reached 1 on both the pop and R&B charts. Their string of successes continued with songs like I've Got to Use My Imagination, The Way We Were, Try to Remember, and Best Thing That Ever Happened to Me. During the summer of 1974, Gladys Knight and the Pips recorded the soundtrack for the film Claudine with the renowned producer Curtis Mayfield. This soundtrack included notable tracks such as On and On, The Makings of You, and Make Yours a Happy Home. Their talent also found a passionate audience in Europe, particularly in the United Kingdom. Several of their Buddha singles enjoyed success in the UK, often several years after their initial release in the United States. For instance, Midnight Train to Georgia reached the top five of the UK singles chart in the summer of 1976, a remarkable three years after its original success in the US. As the late 1970s approached, legal issues compelled Gladys Knight and the Pips to record separately. This development marked a significant transition in their careers, leading to Gladys Knight's first solo LP recordings. She released Miss Gladys Knight, 1978, on Buddha Records and Gladys Knight, 1979, on Columbia Records. Amid these musical developments, Gladys Knight also experienced changes in her personal life. Following her divorce from James Newman II in 1973, she entered into a marriage with Barry Hankerson, who happened to be the uncle of the future hip-hop and R&B sensation Aaliyah. Barry Hankerson, at the time, served as Detroit Mayor Coleman Young's executive aide. During their marriage, Gladys Knight and Barry Hankerson welcomed a son named Shanga Ali into the world on August 1, 1976. However, their union was not without its challenges, as they found themselves embroiled in a heated custody battle over their son, Shanga Ali, which added complexity to their personal lives during this period. In 1980, a significant chapter in the career of Gladys Knight and the Pips unfolded when Johnny Mathis extended an invitation to Gladys Knight to collaborate on two duets, 
When a Child is Born, a song previously made famous by Mathis himself and the Lord's Prayer. This collaboration marked a special moment for the group. Shortly thereafter, in the same year, Gladys Knight and the Pips made a strategic move by signing with Columbia Records. This transition restored the group to its familiar quartet form, and they embarked on a new phase of their musical journey. To breathe life into their new material, they enlisted the help of former Motown producers Nicholas Ashford and Valerie Simpson. Their first two albums under Columbia Records were About Love, 1980, and Touch, 1981. About Love featured the hit single Landlord, which resonated with audiences and added to their list of chart successes. This period marked a creative resurgence for the group. In 1983, Gladys Knight and the Pips continued to leave their mark on the music scene with the release of the hit single Save the Overtime for Me. The song, characterized by its soulful boogie style, achieved significant recognition. Under the artistic direction of Leon Silvers the Third, known for his work on Shalimar hits, the single became a notable success, reaching number 66 on the Hot 100 chart. However, its real triumph was on the R Amp B chart, where it secured the number one position for a single week in mid-1983. This achievement marked a significant milestone for the group, as it was their first number one hit on the r and b chart since 1974. The accompanying music video for Save the Overtime for Me is noteworthy for being one of the earliest r and videos to incorporate elements of hip-hop culture. The album Visions, which included this hit single, further showcased their talent. Additionally, the album featured another R&B hit, Your Number One, in my book, solidifying their continued success in the music industry. In 1987, Gladys Knight made the decision to pursue a solo career, a move that marked a transition in her storied musical journey. She and the Pips recorded their final LP together, titled All Our Love, 1987, under MCA Records. The infectious lead single from this album, Love Overboard, emerged as a number one R&B hit. Its success was further recognized with another Grammy Award, adding to the group's impressive list of accolades. After a triumphant 1988 tour, Gladys Knight and the Pips made the decision to retire as a group, concluding an era of incredible music and performances. Gladys Knight, having achieved immense success both as part of the group and as a solo artist, embarked on her solo career with renewed vigor and determination. The legacy of Gladys Knight and the Pips was firmly cemented in the annals of music history. Their contributions to the world of music earned them numerous accolades and honors, including induction into the Georgia Music Hall of Fame in 1989, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1996, and the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2001. In 1985, while still a part of the Pips, Gladys Knight made a significant contribution to the AIDS awareness movement by joining forces with Dion Warwick, Stevie Wonder, and Elton John on the iconic AIDS benefit single. That's What Friends Are For. This triple number one mega hit not only raised awareness, but also won a Grammy for Best Pop Performance by a duo or group with vocal. The following year, in 1986, Knight shared the stage with Dionne Warwick and Patti LaBelle for the HBO special titled Sisters in the Name of Love, showcasing the powerful voices of these three incredible artists. On March 27, 1988, she delivered a memorable rendition of America the Beautiful, at WrestleMania IV in Atlantic City, New Jersey, which further showcased her versatility as a performer. In 1989, Gladys Knight's musical talents transcended boundaries when she recorded License to Kill, the title track for the James Bond film of the same name. This song became a top 10 hit in the UK and Germany, solidifying her international recognition. Taking a bold step into her solo career, Knight released her third solo album, Good Woman, in 1991. The album reached number one on the r and album chart and featured the number two R&B hit, Men, 
It also achieved a noteworthy number 45 on the main Billboard album chart, marking her highest charting solo album. Superwoman, a track from the album written by Babyface and featuring Dionne Warwick and Patti LaBelle, was nominated for a Grammy. In the same year, Knight collaborated with Patti LaBelle on I Don't Do Duets for LaBelle's album Burnin'. She also performed the national anthem at Game 1 of the World Series, showcasing her vocal prowess on a grand stage. Her fourth solo album, Just For You, achieved gold status and received a Grammy nomination for Best R&B Album in 1995, further cementing her solo career success. Knight's passion for music and her dedication to various charitable causes shone through her numerous collaborations and philanthropic endeavors. She co-headlined VH1's benefit concert Divas Live 2004 alongside several other iconic female artists in support of the Save the Music Foundation. She also recorded a duet with the legendary Ray Charles titled You Were There on Charles's duets album Genius and Friends in 2005. In 2008, Knight appeared at the Divas with Heart concert alongside Chaka Khan, Patti LaBelle, and Diana Ross to raise funds for cardiac research. Additionally, she performed on American Idol to raise money for charity alongside celebrities like Jack Black, Robert Downey Jr., and Ben Stiller. One of the most poignant moments in her career was in 2009, when she sang His Eye is on the Sparrow and the Lord's Prayer at the funeral service for the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. Throughout her career, Gladys Knight continued to evolve her music. In 2013, she recorded You and I Ain't Nothing No More, a song written and produced by Lenny Kravitz for the soundtrack of Lee Daniels' motion picture, The Butler. This track was added to the movie's soundtrack of older songs with various artists and aimed for a nomination in the Best Song category at the Academy Awards. In 2014, her album Where My Heart Belongs marked her 30th Top 40 R&B album, including her work with Gladys Knight and Empty Pips. In an interview that year, she expressed her hope that women in the music and entertainment industry would stand up and avoid selling sex, emphasizing her commitment to dressing respectfully for her audiences. Gladys Knight's impact on the music industry was further recognized when she was ranked number 18 on VH1 Network's list of the 100 Greatest Women of Rock. In 2019, she accepted an invitation to sing the national anthem at Super Bowl Lee a decision that garnered both support and criticism due to the ongoing controversy surrounding Colin Kaepernick's protests against police brutality during pregame anthem ceremonies. Knight defended her choice, expressing her understanding of Kaepernick's reasons, but criticizing the method of protest. Gladys Knight's legacy continued to flourish in 2019 when she was invited to perform at the 100th anniversary of the Delaware State Fair. In 2022, her remarkable contributions to music and culture were honored as she received the prestigious Kennedy Center Honors, presented by U.S. President Joe Biden. She also headlined a U.S. Africa Leaders Summit dinner at the White House, showcasing her enduring influence on the global stage. What do you think about Gladys Knight's life and career? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.